Hi guys, uh, my name is Charles Kuntz and I'm one of the surgeons at South Falls. Uh, today we are going to do a total ear canal ablation in a doll um, that has a tumor um, in its ear canal and you can kind of see it poking out there. Um, we're just getting uh, patient position and everything and I'm going to go to scrub. Um, I will try to move that over so you can see where the tumor is. It's just sitting right down there in the ear canal. It's been present for um, several weeks. It's causing a lot of um, odor and it's bleeding and generally causing a lot of uh, discomfort for the patient and uh, for the owner in terms of uh, the smell and the bleeding. And the so uh, they're very much looking forward to getting this removed. Um, and so um, we're going to go ahead and do that today. Now, uh, the procedure that we're going to do is a total ear canal ablation. A total ear canal ablation is the best uh, surgery for what we present to be a serumous gland and a carcinoma. Now, um, when you do a total ear canal ablation, the median survival time is um, reported to be about four years, and in a, a, a 10 hour of a dog, that's a reasonable survival time. Um, that's in contrast to doing another procedure like a primary tumor removal or a lateral ear resection, something like that, where the median survival time is only about 12 to 18 months. Now, the other differential diagnosis for this patient would be a clinical cell carcinoma, and that carries a much more guarded prognosis, but grossly, um, it just doesn't look like that's what's going on here. Um, it, uh, it looks more well encapsulated, and uh, squamous cell carcinomas tend to be more ulcerated. So, um, anyway, so uh, the patient is positioned on the table, and I'm going to go on the scrub. I'm going to get my leaps on, and we'll get started in just a couple of minutes. Now while I'm scrubbing, straight out of a, uh, uh, the bone in that area, and you can't really grab it with the hemostat, you can't really polarize it very effectively. And then the other uh, complication that we can see um, with this would be recurrent draining tracts, or fistulous tracts, which can occur um, if you leave some secretory material in the uh, tympanic bulla. So, um, anyway, so we're just uh, preparing the patient for surgery. We're using uh, betadine rather than chlorhexidine because chlorhexidine is very, very uh, toxic to the cornea. And so anytime we're operating near the eye, we want to avoid using chlorhexidine. So as always, please um, subscribe to our channel, um, our, our YouTube channel, and 
Uh, you can see the chat on the right-hand side of the screen. Feel free to post any questions, although I don't have anybody dedicated to um, uh, monitoring that computer. Um, and so we'll just check that periodically. We'll try, try to get to your questions as, as quickly as we can. Yeah, so we're going to go through our pre-surgical checklist like we do every day. Um, and I'll just read those out loud as we go. So the first thing we want to do is um, check to make sure our ground plate is connected. If our ground plate is not connected, there's potential for uh, pretty severe burns to the skin. So we make sure that the ground plate is connected on the information and then to the electric water machine as well, which it is. Um, next thing we're going to do is discuss um, a confirmed sign, and we know that this is the left side of the jaw. Um, we're going to review the plan of the operation, and what that means is that we're going to uh, discuss what exactly we're going to do. So in this patient, what we're going to do is total ablation on the left hand side, including a bullet on the scale. We're going to the instruments required, so just a soft tissue pack. We will need gel fever retractors, probably number or tubes. Um, and then we will need uh, Ron to do the whole osteotomy, and we can use the you know, for that. Um, we're not going to take any photographs because we're, we're uh, sharing this live. Potential complications, there's nothing during the surgery that the anesthetist needs to be worried about. Um, and then as far as blood volume is concerned, this patient weighs how much? Uh, we have 5.75. 5.75, so we assume about 10 mils per kilo. Um, in dogs weighing less than 10 kilos, so this would be about 575 milliliters, um, with 10% um, blood loss being around 57 milliliters and 20% blood loss being around 50 milliliters. Okay. Um, so we're going to do some seven minute blood splits. Um, can somebody respond on the chat um, if you can hear my voice well? Uh, sometimes we have a bad echo, and so we're trying to get things to So just uh, uh, type in on the chat line if you can hear me well or if you cannot. Starting with us today, we have Mary, who's one of our new interns. Uh, Mary was in general practice for a couple of years after graduating from vet school, so she's here with us now on uh, a semi permanent basis for the next year or so. And we have um, uh, Jasmine, who's from Malaysia, who's a vet student in the class as well. And then doing anesthesia, we have Sarah and Jess, and Jess, I assume, will not be in her full procedure just for the beginning.
Can I confirm from somebody that the sound is coming through clearly? Can you please respond on the, uh, on the chat? And any one of our viewers? Just a minute, can you have somebody um, log on from the treatment room and just make sure that they can hear my voice? Extends from the ear to the mouth, all the way down to the level of the pinkness of the mouth. And this procedure you really cannot do without the help of the child. You can see from that part of the ear, the end of the cut through the child's pelvic vein. Alright, so now I'm down to my ear, and I'm here now. I'm going to show you. So then I invert the pinna, and I'm going to make a circular incision around the external portion of the ear. Through the first, uh, through the skin on the skin, and through the first layer of the carpet. And I'm going to do that. And I'm going to grab on to the ear canal with the top mat. And I'm just very carefully going to dissect soft tissue as well. I'm happy to go to the party to do my last section on the vertical canal, but once I go to the long way canal, I'll switch over to uh, the tendency to be triggered in the country. 
procedure, the main thing, you know, one of the most important things that we're trying to do is avoid cutting the facial nerve. And the key in avoiding the facial nerve is to stay right on the carpet when we're doing our dissection. Thank 
You know what really helps the certain question of the OCS using some kind of the query at all data? Now, I remember the standard part of our surgical pack. Um, it's really great for delicate soft tissue dissection.
current draining trash, the majority of the time I see them uh, when people are more aggressive and they come into the venture company to really take me out. And as I go in, I'm making sure that I avoid the dorsal, dorsal aspect because of the vestibular apparatus. So that's the absolute nerve of the Thank you. 
the
the uneventful surgery except for not being able to monitor the woman on the surgery light at the camera. <laughs> Nearly took out our new nurse, Sarah. <laughs> We get to the place to go. Yep. So post operative lens guy. I'm happy to have my pivot team. Um I'm sorry, um Moxicam. Um Christian Red as well, remember. Oh, she's on the trial at the same room. I think that's all. Okay. I'm fine with Moxicam for yeah. this guy. Um to go home and then we'll just use methadone. Yes, I'm going to be a much more than that as we've done this much work. Um, I'm happy with it. Um, I'm happy with it. And then we tend to close these kind of like a T shape incision, so we close the vertical part of the incision. Vertically and the circular part of the incision around the end, and we'll close horizontally. Guys, if they have um, arthritis uh, external of the two weeks of beer, pre operatively, we will put them on, we'll do a culture and we'll put them on long term. But because this guy obviously had a tumor that was called the arthritis, we are not going to um, do a culture and we won't put them on the long term. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, we're also going to do some. Lubrication of the eye in case we have facial nerve palsy, although as soon as we can establish that the facial nerve is working and then you've got a blue gate wax, um, we can discontinue the bleeding of the eye. And the station is fine. Yeah. For hand gliding and, uh, and parachuting and stuff, and because it's fine, it just holds up and so I'm yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I'm just going to have a look at. Uh, uh, So I'm just going to respond to a couple of questions here.
All right, so I'm going to end the stream. Thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll get something else up soon. Thanks, guys.